for all my Sub-Zero riders out there, if anyone wants some merch, it's available for three more days. This Saturday, the merch site is going down, so get it while it lasts. Also, check out my Patreon for my Patreon podcast, episode one featuring Pawpaw, extended cuts of all my episodes, including this one, and my newest podcast episode with my good friend Jay, who talks about how he overcame not being able to walk. Today we're out here in Austin, Texas, going around to some of these homeless encampments, doing a little MTV Homeless Cribs edition. That's pretty f***ed up down here. <laughs> Bitch, I just bought this shit! Cash? Cash money, baby! All right, so we came in here to buy some alcohol to shoot this video. Guy didn't like that we were filming in there and said, you know what, I'm calling the cops. He started calling the cops. Cops are on the way. Only problem is, see this man? See how he's getting away from the thing? Yeah, he's, he's scared. That's how you know. When the cops come and the person that's starting to walk away the most, hey, Marco, the cops are coming right now. Oh, look, he, he's got a good act. You see that act? Good, bro. You got your ankle monitor off? Yeah. Do you stay out here somewhere? No, I'm staying at the safe place. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was homeless for about eight years. And I've been having some problems, but they got taken care of by the police today. <laughs> you like to get drunk, girl? Yeah! Aye! You want a beer? Yeah, go ahead and get you one. You all pissed Fuck. off. What happened? Fuck what? Everything. I'm still on my goddamn back. I done did every goddamn thing I know to do. I done went in every fucking place I know to do. Everything I know to do to make it in this life. You think I chose this shit? This shit chose me. Talk that talk. Fuck them. Uh. Fuck them. Uh. I done did everything I need to do. Uh. I don't got no bosses. I lay on my goddamn back and try to figure out how I'm going to eat every goddamn day. Every day by myself. Take another one Fuck too. Em. Here, here's another one. I have a second one. Yeah. It's a hard knock life, baby, but you gonna make it. Here it is, we're out in the place to be. Where are we at, Marco? We're in Austin, Texas, the wastelands. Doing a little video out here on the on uh, the cribs, the cribs of the homeless out here. What's up, man? Could you, for the camera, show, give us a little tour of your home? Give us a little tour of the tent, where you live, how you make it out here? I don't know where you rest your head at. That blue tent, that you blue. show it to us? We want to see the, 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 inner, the insides of it and all that. We're doing a video, it's like MTV homeless cribs kind of a thing, you know what I mean? Homeless with the zip, look at that. Yeah, give us a little look inside. Give us the rundown. You got to narrate it. Say, say, I had to do it like this because cause it started raining, because it was raining, and my stuff was getting wet. And I had to put it in bags and stuff because it was raining uh, for two days last night earlier. Tell about how hard it is out here. Well, I don't know about nobody else, but it ain't hard. Not for me, it ain't. Okay, right here. Okay. Wanna see the you gotta see the inside? Oh, wow. You got to set up here. Get, get a shot in there. And we got the toilet paper. Now hold up, look at the candle. Peep the candle, peep the candle. Peep the candle to the left. Boy got his Sunday's best hanging up. Look at them shirts hanging up. But you gotta go to church? I need that shirt right there, bro. I've been looking for something like that since Goodwill days, man. Look at this shirt. Which one, that one? Ooh, yeah, look at this. Oh yeah, this one have me written all over. Hey bro, can I go get some money to give you for this? I'll be right back. I washed everything, everything. That boy taking off. Have you ever brought you a female back here and smashed her out? No, no, I'm not tempting to. Uh, 70, but we're friends. I mean, we smoke. Um, Just chill, thing. hang out. How long you been right here? Oh, uh, maybe uh, two weeks. Man. Looks clean, bro. The city says no more tents. Well, how would that affect you, positively or negatively? Negative. Negative. Negative, really? Negative. Got this jacket that I don't really wear this much. It's pretty badass, bro. I'm going to give it to you. It's just for you. What about the money? He needs money, bro. Oh, God. Yeah, <laughs> buddy. It's big bucks. <laughs> The big bucks, Tom. All of it, bro. Don't short them, bro. You can have this too when it gets cold and shit. You think about me, bro. Thank you, sir. God bless you. That's real love. You like that shirt the way you say you like that shirt? Put that hoe on right now. Oh, yeah. Hey, did you wear this? Damn, that looks good on did you. Did you wear this? Where'd you get uh, it? Uh, right here. They come and give you them? The shirt. Oh, that shit looks good, bro. Do a 180. <laughs> Stay right there. Uh, I ain't got my shit straight now. I just straight. It don't matter, bro. Mind if we go in there? Go ahead. See, I got all my clothes. I ain't did no folding no, or something like that. So you got it divided? Yes, sir. So that's half? Yes, sir. I do have my Let's check it out. Look at this. We got the cracker pack. We got some laundry. We got the, we got a, we got the mattress up in here. Yeah. It's a big tent. But I just got it. It's looking nice, man. Yeah. All kind of blankets. You got the five liter water jug. Man, you living, you living, living all right out here. 
Hey, listen, bro. I'm gonna ask you a question. I need you to be. I need you to be super honest. Yeah. You had sex with a girl in here before? Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. When was the last time you did? Oh think? man, man. Ah, talk that. Talk. I had two of them, goddamn, in that last night, but they didn't want to throw down. So, what's something that could really help you out out here? A car. <laughs> Go get a job. Uh -huh. Back and forth with the job. Well, I ain't worried about no job. I'm 62 years old. Are these bikes hurt yours out here? Yeah. Show, show us your bikes. We want to hear you talk about it. Man. It's just a bike. It's just a bike on flat. And then I just said, fuck it. I don't, I don't want to ride it. Y'all came early. Y'all would have seen number plastic bottles. Well, a white woman had me to, to try to uh, collect a lot of plastic bottles. And, and they were supposed to be starting some kind of recycle. Hey sir, how are you? What's crack a lackin'? Um, we're out here filming a documentary on the homeless of Austin, uh, seeing how they live. We were looking for, to do a little home tour. We'd love to just take a look inside. Do you have a couch in there? Yep. Look at that. Guy paid me $10 to take it out of his truck. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong with that couch. There's no stains, nothing. It's a nice looking couch. What else do you have in here? What are some of the other amenities of the tent? A uh, bunch of chairs, that's it. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Yeah, so tell me, uh, what's it what's it like living out here? At first it was kind of scary because you didn't know where your meal was going to come from and this and that. But um, be honest with you, I pray a lot, so I took care of that. But other than that, I don't fear nothing because I don't, I don't do no wrong. I don't do, do nobody no wrong. You know, I've been out here, my girl been out here for a year. Where did you live before you lived here? I was in the penitentiary. Yeah, 28 years in the penitentiary. I don't bother nobody. I do my thing, work a little bit here and there. It's not hard. I mean, I don't do no drugs. I don't mess with nobody. I don't... You know what I'm saying? The scariest thing is, is to get too comfortable living out here on the streets. That's true. To be honest with you, I think I got uh, I got a little too comfortable. When the when it froze out here, we uh, of course leave the tents behind. We're put in hotels, but the tents got left behind. So one of them was overrun by rats, and this one we got as a second one, but it was a little too small, and now it's been collapsed by the wind. It's not the ideal conditions, but you know, we make it as comfortable as we can. Not all of us are the same. People, you know, they do. We do have some like like every community. We have people that are bad apples. You know, they do they do their mistakes and all that. But for the most part, we're all pretty quiet around here. My name is Adam. Adam. Yeah. I'm Brandon. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Why did you choose this location? This location chose me. I didn't choose the location. It's God's will. It's not mine. Uh, we don't mix with all the other stuff that goes on around here. So. You know, we're kind of the odd ones out right here. <laughs> What's something that someone could do to help you out here? I mean, they, they, they help us plenty with food and stuff out here. I mean, it's an overabundance, really, with food that comes out here. We need help sometimes with fuel for our little burners to cook our food. You know, we like hot meals sometimes. Cans, it's hard to come by the cans, though. They're always gone at the stores. And don't forget, that's your main essential. Hey. You get that in there. Dude, don't go home without it. Look at this. We have uh, yeah, a chair, violin. They even have a uh, water dispenser. Place to store their clothes. Kind of a cupboard, vitamin cabinet, shampoo, toiletries right there. They have the window. Speaker and a nice bed, bed set up. It actually smells pretty nice in here, doesn't it? It's not a rock. That's a fossil. Yeah. Dude, that's sick. Yeah. That sounds rude to say, but like she seems just like a completely average normal woman. Nice tent, smells good, organized, you know. Kind of breaks your preconceived notions of homeless people. That's why I don't like want to go out and joke on them and stuff because it's like... It's a real situation. Yeah. Yeah, don't you really yeah. realize that when you talk to her, she's got a job, she's living out there, she's doing her best to keep it clean, yeah. dealing with all this shit, and it's like, like she doesn't want to be employed. out there. She's employed, like she has, you know, she's doing her best. Honestly, people out of ignorance don't understand like the situations that they've been put through and like the circumstances that put them on the street anyways. Like, who's to say it wouldn't have been us if we didn't, like if we had had different circumstances? Oh, dude, I'm a few bad choices away from being homeless, I can tell you. You know, walking up to them, like, trying to ask them questions about their life. Like, I can see how it would come across, like, a little bit, like, you know, like, oh, why are you here? Like, talking to me. I think about someone knocked like, on your uh, house or apartment door and was like, hey, can I do an interview about your life? I'm trying to raise awareness for you. I'd be like, no, dude. That's my tent. We put up those tarps to block us from the wind or rain or cold or whatever. The essential things that we need are water. And then the city gives us food. So wh where do you go to, uh... You said you put water in this? Yes. Where do you go to fill this up with water? Um, we use the spigots to the restaurants. A lot of them to shut them off, so we're having a hard time getting water, so. The city comes by every week and they give us food, and that's how we actually eat. That's a, that would be a bag of food they get, that they give us every week. And does the, uh, the city, do you have to find them, or do they come and find you in your tents? They come find us. 
they do expect it for our a place to be clean, and they come out once a month and take everything that's extra. Anything that doesn't fit in the tank gets taken. We just gotta clean up once a month and be be on our best behavior. <laughs> and is this whole uh, site like yours mainly? This is mine. There was other people living there, but they're gone, so we're cleaning up now. There's a room, there's rooms that you can rent hourly, and we rent them to bathe like every three to four days, you know, as needed. And we, and we, that's where you shower at. Yeah, we ba we bathe here too. You know. What does it cost to rent a room? Twenty five dollars an hour. Yeah. Kind of expensive. That is expensive. So we just kind of wing it. <laughs> How long have you been out here? I've been out here for nine years. Still waiting for Social Security. In this same spot? No, all over Austin. This is the place I've stayed the longest. What started off like when you first became homeless? Um, I lost my family, and, uh, and I just never was put on my uh, proper medication for my psych and um, psych problems, and this has evolved to this. So I'm just waiting. Do you think mental health is largely responsible for a lot of people's homelessness? Yes, about eight, 90 percent. Yeah, mental health is very dangerous out here. This is not. It's not as fun as people think. It is. It's not especially for a female and I'm being single. Um, just keep your nose clean, stay out of trouble, and don't trust anybody. <laughs> Not being able to trust people probably doesn't do great for the mental health. No, it doesn't. But yeah, If a viewer, if it's someone at home was watching this, is there somewhere they could donate or some way that they could help people living out here? Um, the city of Austin is the one that donates to us, and that's who I would give back to. But uh, Goodwill and uh, Salvation Army clothing is very important. Once it rains and things get wet, we have to throw them away. We, we don't have the ability, we don't have the capabilities to wash and dry clothes, so we have to throw them out. Where right. do you store your clothes? Oh, it, well, it just rains, so I just threw them away. Oh, really? I really, you do, you do have to throw them away because they stay too long. By the time I get to wash, they get moldy, so I just throw them away. But this is my space. Um, the city knows that we're here. They kind of register us at the, at the address, and they bring us food, check on us once a week. And they've also provided me with um, my MHMR apartments and uh, caseworkers to help me. We're just waiting on housing now. What's your name? William. William? Buckner. Buckner. But everybody calls me Buck. Uh, hey, people call me Buck too. My name is Brandon Buckingham. <laughs> That's cool. So you've lived in this same uh, area for four years? Right across the street. Four winters right across the street? I got the only TP10 over Oh, wow. Hi, Mom. <laughs> yeah, I'm fixing to turn 67, so I know I don't look over 40. We didn't have that many people here. And all of a sudden, they just start moving in on us. Why did you choose to uh, have a teepee opposed to like a regular dome tent? Because I got Indian blood in me. And I've always, I wanted to learn how to make a real one. I made this clock just fiddling around out of a, a serving tray. I got my little lights here. I got my little lights over here. This is my food, my coverage for my food, my clothes, I ain't put them all up yet, but I done laundry. When I get my next check, I'm gonna buy me a little generator. Oh yeah. For, so I can have, see I got a little stove. What else do you think you would need? What, what, uh, what would make it better besides the generator? That, my air conditioner. <laughs> Peace out. Yeah, that was great, thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. What are you cooking right now? Oh, this is just some bacon, potatoes, and egg. Yeah, I'm not cooking it, I'm just gonna eat it. <laughs> it's kind of a cool little kitchen area, though. It's like a community kitchen. I'm good. How you doing, what's your name? Mike. Mike, nice to meet you, Mike, I'm Brandon. How's it going, Raymond? Got a big flat screen. You know, it's pretty normal life, anyway. I'm in the situation, my sister passed away, um, and uh, my job with COVID-19, so much of our hours were cut back. But we do everything like everybody else. You know, we work every single day, you know. But well, I'll give you an idea. Those are that's clean. Yeah. So we work all the time. Um, but yeah, it's it's not easy. You know, uh, you get hassled by people, um, hassled by police. But overall, it's not terrible. What bugs me, I guess, bugs me the most, is not having access to a shower every single day but i just go to the gym and go shower there but yeah it's there's it's not it doesn't suck you know it could be better could be worse yeah i've had this generator for many years and i didn't always use it for this and they, you know. oh 
that's awesome. Yeah, I've done Chuck. Oh, he's got a TV. You want to? You, you mind if he comes in here for a second? Yeah. But yeah, having a TV, I've got Roku, so I've got a bunch of stuff to, uh, stuff to watch. I don't have the uh, Peacock turned on, so that's probably going to die in a few seconds. <laughs> but yeah, I've got I got the TV uh, on bulk pickup. I got seven TVs in one night. Six of them were good. Sold the other five. I'm starting back up my uh, lawn, uh, lawn care business again, so just the shower thing in the morning kind of pisses me off. There it goes. Okay. I was close on time. Oh, thanks for showing us that. Yeah. I have an air conditioner too, but I haven't needed it for a while. By and, lar you know, by and large, in Austin, they pretty much hate, you know, everything in the news is negative about all the homeless camps or they're all a bunch of, you know, trash pits and a bunch of thieves and drug, you know, drug dealers and drug users and, you know, the people want to be here. Dude, nobody wants to be homeless. You know, there are some people out here that have mental issues that need help. They truly do. But there's not a lot of resources for them. So, you know, it wouldn't matter homeless or not. There's a lot of people that need help that don't get it. So, you know, I've got 20 year old felonies that keep me from renting a place, even though I've already been a homeowner. So it's just difficult for a lot of places. If you have a felony on your record, you can't live there, plain and simple. Um, that kind of sucks because mine are 20 years old and I can't get a, you know, I can't rent an apartment even though I've owned a house. So I don't know. Um, this is no way to live for anybody. And Austin has got so outrageously expensive. You know, you have to live at, a, you know, you have to have a two bedroom apartment. The rent's 1500 bucks a month for a two bedroom apartment. I remember when you could rent a place in Austin, a huge one bedroom place for 400 bucks a month. I understand, you know, the cost of living goes up, blah, blah, blah. But overall, the prices have got so outrageous that you can't live, you can't afford to live by yourself unless you make 5,000 bucks a month. And that's difficult. You know, and they usually want first month and last month. Well, so say the rent's 1,500 bucks, that's $3,000 you gotta come up with to move in, not including deposits for utilities or anything else. So right off the bat, you have to have 4,000 bucks saved up, and that's if you wipe out all your savings, how are you gonna pay any of your bills? Yeah. There's, just no, there's just no way to get ahead in Austin. It's gotten to be where Austin is the San Francisco of Texas. Appreciate your time and everything. Hope you have a great day, and yeah, thank you so much. Wish you the best. God bless you. Good luck. Thanks a bunch. Appreciate it. Shout out to Andrew Pro TV, Blake Mesk, and Ivy Brand for helping me with this episode. Check out my Patreon, and thanks for watching, you guys. You're killing much more than pain when your brain starts to think that it's missing something. You're killing much more than pain when you try to escape, even for a day. You're killing much more than pain when your brain starts to think that it's missing something. You're killing much more than pain when you trick your brain, even for a day.